Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where we will be talking about project service automation and how that works out of the box with Dynamics 365 for sales. Now, before we dive in, my name is Dion Taylor, and you can follow me on Twitter at d365goddess.com, or you can take a look at my blog at d365goddess.com. Now let's dive into the functionality. You can see here that I've already logged into the project service app and you can do that by switching, clicking here on the app switcher and then selecting project service. What I did after that was I changed my area to sales. I believe it defaulted to projects. Uh, and then that brings me here to the sales area where I can select opportunities. So let's dive right in and create a new opportunity. I'm just going to go ahead and use the quick create form here. And I'm going to put in a name. Venture works. Now this is a very important field. This is again where we can change the type of opportunity that we're working on. Item based is the quote unquote regular sales opportunity. We also have work based, which is our project based opportunity. And then we have service maintenance based, which is field service opportunities. Uh, and I actually did a video on that. So feel free to, uh, to check that one out as well. In this particular case, we're going to create a work based opportunity. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in AdventureWorks here and the contact at AdventureWorks, which is only Amos. Uh, we see here that we have some different fields that we need to populate. So I can put in an organization unit here as well. So let's put in Fabricam. And I'm looking for Fabricam US. And then again, I can put some budget amounts in here as well. So the customer told me they have a budget of 155K. So I'm gonna put that in there as well as the resume, as the estimated revenue. And then obviously I can put in a close date as well. So let's say I'm gonna give this until the first. And then I can just go ahead and save and close that opportunity. So we now see that the opportunity has been created so let's just go ahead and enter some additional information here I'm going to opportunity lines and that allows me as you can see here to enter project based lines now this is actually the form uh, that is particularly especially for project type of opportunities so let me just go ahead and add that opportunity line and then you'll see that my opportunity line form is also project based right this is the project information form so I can go ahead and put in here the opportunity line so I'm gonna say um, system implementation and we said the budget was that, and this is going to be a time and material. Obviously, you can also do a fixed price. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and close that. And that's really all that I have to put in here. Again, if I wanted to add product baselines, I can do that obviously as well. Now we see that my estimated revenue actually has been updated in my opportunity estimated revenue fields as well. Now I have some other fields on here on my business process flow and I'm just going to go ahead and populate that data so we can move on to my quotes from here. So here we go. We have those fields completed. I can navigate to my next stage. And again, we see that order type and then I can mark my stakeholders completed as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And if I want to navigate to my next stage, you can see that that's actually going to the quote entity. So what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to navigate to my quotes area and then I'm going to create a quote from this opportunity. 
So I'm just going to hit the plus button right over here and that will pull in that quote, that opportunity data into my quote. So you can see here, everything has been pulled over. I'm just going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to go back to my opportunity. And now since I created that quote, I can go ahead and go to my next stage and select that quote that I just created. So from here, uh, again, you can put in some additional fields here, such as the request delivery date. You definitely want to put that in there. Let's say they want this done January 15th. And then I can also put some related quote information in here. Uh, the quote is effective from maybe today through maybe a week. And then I can put in my payment terms in here as well. Oops. And let's go ahead and save that. So once we've done that, now we're going to go to the quote lines and we see that some of that information from the opportunity has been brought over as a project based quote line. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. And again, this is the quote line for projects. So now I can configure some additional things here. Do I want to include expenses? Yes or no. Do I want to include fees with this quote? Uh, or not. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it right over here. I'm going to just do the time. Uh, basically what that means is I am going to quote the uh, time that I need to complete this project. And I will talk about that uh, a little bit more in a second here. Now, the first thing I want to do here is I want to create a new project. So I'm going to click here, new project. And again, I'm going to call this project for venture works. And if you want, you can even put your quote ID in here as well. So let's do that. And again, I can put the customer in here. Adventure works. I can put it in the description here. This is not a template. I'm going to go ahead and select my project template over here. And that's the agile template that I want to do. Again, my contracting unit is been brought over. I'm going to put in an estimated start date. Let's say we're going to start the 1st of November. And you can see since I actually selected a project template that my estimated hours and my estimated cost has been brought over. So now I'm just going to go ahead and save and close that. And the system is now going to create that project in the background. And here we go. So the first thing I want to do right now is to go to my project and update some of those project tasks. So we can just go ahead and click oops in the project. So let's go ahead and open the project. And then we can navigate to the schedule, which is a WBS. You saw that it was still copying my WBS, but it looks like it's been done. And from here, this is where we can now update our project. So maybe we want to adjust these times here a little bit. Maybe we want to adjust the effort hours a little bit. Maybe we want to change the type of resources we need for each of those tasks. Maybe we want to add tasks. Maybe we want to delete tasks. So you can do all of that directly from within here. And then when you're done, obviously you're going to save that project. So let's just pretend like we made our changes and let's go back to the quote line. And what we can do then is we can actually take a look at the quote line details for this. And what that is, the quote line details is basically everything that you saw here on the project. What it's going to do is when I click that import button, it's going to grab all of those tasks, the total effort, the duration and the roles. Uh, and it's going to populate that directly into my quote line. So let's just click on import from project estimation. And it's going to ask us, do you want to summarize it? I'm just going to leave it here for leaf node and I'm going to click OK. And we see that our quote line details now have been imported. So I can see, as you can see here, here's a description, billing type, whether it's chargeable or not. 
the resourcing unit, the role, start date, end date, and then I can see my quantity of hours. And then if I scroll to the side here, I can also see my total amounts here as well. Then I can go ahead and set up an invoice schedule as well. So I can just say, hey, generate my invoice schedule. That is based on those dates that I put in there earlier. Oh, let's just see here. My billing start date was not populated. So let's go back here real quick. My billing start date should be also on the first because that's when we're expecting it to start. Let's go back to my invoice schedule and generate that again. And here we go. That's our invoice run date and our transaction cut up date. So once we're done with that, uh, you can see now that we actually have the customer budget and the full, the fully quoted amount is automatically populated on here as well. So let's go back to that quote. And again, also on that quote, we can now see the total amounts. Now there are some additional things on that quote here as well. So you can take a look at some quote analysis. Um, you want to make sure, let me actually first go to the profitability analysis and actually update, <clears throat> recalculate some of those fields here. Recalculate, well, there's nothing here. And then I'm going to save that and that will update some of those fields. Uh, let's just go back here as well. Estimated completion, I want to recalculate that and customer budget, recalculate that, and let's save that. And now let's take a look at that quote analysis. I'm just gonna refresh my screen here real quick. So we now see our margins, uh, whether or not we're estimated to finish on time or late. So we see here that this, we probably wanna adjust this a little bit. And then we can also take a look at our profitability analysis, right? We have our numbers right over here, our key metrics. And then if we can, if we want to, we can also take a look at the co comparison, to customer expectations, whether or not it's on time, whether or not it is, as you can see in the budget. And then here you can see those charts on here as well, which is very nice to show to your customers. So this is looking pretty good for me. So obviously from here, you can go ahead and activate your quote. You can create a PDF if you wanted to do that and or email this as PDF. And then when the customer says, yes, this is actually what I want to do, uh, you can then go ahead and close that quote as one. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you see, since I actually closed it as one, it now created that order, which in field service is actually a project contract. And then from here, we can now start to go ahead and assign people to uh, that project. And then once people are actually going in and adding their time and submitting their time and when their time is actually uh, then approved and then actually changed to ready to be billed, we can create our invoices directly here from the project contract. So that concludes this video in regards to project service and Dynamics 365 for sales and how they work together. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.